And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Sharon Incorporated. It's a game about space. A game about mining a planet. Woohoo! I love space games. But unfortunately, once you take the mask of science fiction off of the game, there's nothing much left. It's an area control game uh, on a planet with maybe some interesting... I, 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 oh, I'm sorry, I fell asleep just thinking about the game. Some people are going to like this game. It's certainly for some people, but I am not one of those people. I love the theme, but the game, well, let's look at it. The game takes place in four rounds, which is tracked down here. Each round plays exactly the same. Now I'm showing you a, a three-player game here. And each player puts one of their flags on these five spaces here. There's also a flag here up at the top to show turn order. Now these flags, you have to assemble them and put them together at the beginning of the game, which is kind of annoying. Just thought I'd point that out. But anyway, all right, they're flags. That's pretty cool. On your turn, when it's your turn, you are going to be putting one of these flags in different spots on the board. You can put on one of these circles that's on a corner. Notice this flag here borders the four spots around it. Let's zoom in there. Or you can place it here on the side that only borders two. Or you can place it in the middle just directly into a territory. Now, you might wonder why do you put it in the middle when you could put it on the corner. Well, let's say there's a tie. At the end of each round, you're going to be collecting all the gems here for whoever wins each area. So in this area here, the whoever has the most flags around it wins. Well, white has one and blue has one, so they've tied. However, since blue is on the here between two, he breaks the tie. But let's say brown was involved and he was in the middle. Well, he would break the tie too. Yes, he's only going to get that one territory, but he's going to get it because he went in the middle. But that's all he's going to get. Well, these flags have an opportunity to get more. So that's an interesting mechanic. But maybe not enough to make the whole game interesting. Also, you're going to be putting out five of these per turn. Um, I'm sorry, four of them per turn. And after you put out the four that you put out, you're going to leave one of the flags on the board. If you're the only person to leave a flag on one of these special spaces, then you can take that special action. Let's look at them. Here, you can move a flag that you control to another spot. Here you get a wild gem. This counts as a gem of any color. Here you can take a card, and we'll talk about cards in a moment. Here you can change one color for another color. Or here you can trade two gems for one gem. And at the end of each round, since players can't keep more than two gems, if you keep one here, you can keep six. Now, I mentioned cards. Let's look at the cards. Players will have cards in their hand, and they're trying to build these cards. Put these cards in front of them. You put that card in front of you, you get that many points. You can only build one card of each number, so it's important to diversify. And so, for example, this 11 needs three black gems, two yellow, one blue, and one purple. Players will be getting about two cards each turn. They'll also have the opportunity, as that space you saw, and in between the turns, over here there will be a discard pile, and what we call common cards, cards that anybody can get into. So that's the game. You're going to do that for four rounds. Each round you'll seed the planet with more gems, pull everything off, put out everything again, see who wins each area, and the player who has the most points from the cards they've placed is the winner. I think I've tipped my hand onto whether I'm a fan of this game or not. I'm not. And it's kind of hard to peg why. I mean, there's nothing in it where you sit there and go, wow, this is just, this is the terrible rules, the game's broken. No, the game works. I mean, it, it, it works as it should. The reason I, I'm, I'm not a fan of it is, one, it's very boring. And because each round is exactly the same, there's no sense of buildup. The final round, if you're behind, you're just going through motions because there's no way you're going to catch up. Secondly, because it is an area control game, it's really easy to get cornered out if the other players, who may not be going after you in particular, just happen to shove you out of every section, you can do very poorly. But that's more of a sour grapes thing, so I don't think that counts. The, the game itself, sci-fi. Woo! Wait a minute, this doesn't really mean anything about sci-fi. Each of these buildings that you get, these cards. I mean, look at that. Yay! It's a uh, outpost. Well, I don't... It doesn't feel like a building an outpost. What does that do for me? No, I built a number two card. So the theme is kind of just thrown in there. And 
I don't know. The, it, this game just meets that sin of board games in which it's just boring. And a boring game, I can't recommend it. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. 